Hello everybody! Welcome to a Sunday edition of Sun Dragon Tips and Tricks. I'm Rebecca. I am the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in Brevard, North Carolina. And I'm filming on a somewhat rainy Sunday because I have to go do some other stuff on Monday. Ah, oh, what am I gonna do? I'll try to get this video up sometime today so you get a, a, an early sneak peek type of thing. But today I thought we would talk about how to pick up a runaway stitch. So say one slips off and runs down away and it looks like a run in your stockings for those of us who used to wear stockings long time ago. <laughs> so how to fix that? We're going to talk about some things that have to do with that. Um, let's just dive into it, right? Using a repair hook, which is really a glorified crochet hook, can be so helpful. And it's something that you know, just have some confidence and you can get through it. Let's get to it. <laughs> so picking up dropped or what can become runaway stitches. Here is some stuff that I think is really helpful. It really helps to understand the anatomy of a stitch, what's going on with stitches. And here's the deal with them. They, they really are loops pulled through loops. That's the essentials of knitting. So a knit stitch to understand what's happening with them, a knit stitch is one loop that is pulled towards you through another loop. The knit stitch comes forward when you're looking at your work. If what you're looking at is a, is a knit stitch, and these are the ones that I call v-necks, in that what is hanging right under the loop looks like a v. So like if the loop that is on the needle is here, what is right underneath it looks like a V. If that's the neck, we've got a V neck on our sweater. Some people might call them hearts as well. Now, a purl stitch is a loop that is pulled away from you through another loop. I call them turtlenecks. Because when you look at them, Here's the loop that's on your needle. The purl stitch will look kind of like it's choking it off, like it's straight underneath it. That's a loop, to create that stitch, you pulled a loop away from yourself through another loop to make that look. That is gonna be very helpful when we use our repair hook, which is essentially a crochet hook Repair hooks, when they're sold in knit shops, can often be shorter, so they're not as bulky and long as a crochet hook. They'll have the hook end, and often they will have kind of a more pointed end too. So you'll have the hook, but you'll have a pointed end that looks like a knitting needle if it's a single-sided repair hook. There are ones that have a hook on either end if we're gonna write, draw it really basically. And that is good for a different type of stitch to fix. What I want to address right now is fixing stitches in what's called stockinette. Because my rule of thumb is drop stitches are always easier to fix on the knit side. And so for stockinette, what we affectionately as knitters call stockinette, all the knit stitches are on the same side of the fabric. What I call what we're making, I call it the fabric. And that's because you, if you're knitting flat, you knit on one side and purl on the other, and then all the V's end up on one side. Garter is you have knit stitches on both sides. that can make it a little more difficult to fix it if it's easier to fix on the knit side. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, if we look at, here I have done really big, uh, a really big drawing 
of what stockinette where multiple rows of V's when they're stretched out they may not look quite like a V but we've got the V right here we've got it right here okay if we look at kind of break down again the anatomy of what's going on here we have loops pulled through loops the top level of this if I was to follow it so we could see what's going on I'm gonna do it in orange we have the loop that goes over the needle it, it pulls through the loop underneath it and then goes behind and back up and around if we were gonna follow this strand of yarn up and around up and around if I was actually going to take out this knitting needle if we were gonna look at this without the knitting needle there if we were gonna take him out and just have live stitches everyone's nightmare right then the the needle fell out let's take a look at what this would look like the top strand that I was just coloring in we have loops that duck in and out of other loops so let's take the next here is the next row down we have a loop with the blue and the loop with the orange pulls straight up we put we, you get that by pulling towards you if you don't if you can't see it take my word for it I might have to go in and fill this in later for our after picture but this second row does the same thing the first row does it let's make the bottom green didn't draw all of my lines in here but if we were gonna examine this the first row of knitting at the bottom of this fabric is a bunch of loops in green and then the next row are a bunch of loops in blue that were pulled through each of those loops of green and then loops of orange were pulled through those loops of blue so let's say let's take a look down here let's say one of those stitches fell off it could have fallen off right where you were knitting or it could you could notice it's way over here slide over to where it is what you'll notice if it runs away from you and you catch it before you knit over it because if you knit over it without seeing it that's gonna close this gap and make things a little funky you'll notice that you've got a loose stitch somewhere way below where your needles are and these strands now these strands we often refer to them in the business as ladders they are these loops they are the loops that have fallen out the v-necks have fallen out and become these ladders and we need to climb the ladder you need to climb that ladder back up to the top so let's color code these the same way that they were in the previous example the la the lowest rung which is we still have something left of that luckily catch that that's the first thing I would do is catch this on um, on a repair hook if you have it on uh, with an open close stitch marker anything you can do to make sure that it doesn't go all the way down all the way down there's ways to fix that too that might be another video so I am actually gonna have a row above what I showed you up there I'm gonna color this stuff in real fast so you can see so I had to redraw this a little bit so we can see what's going on because the strands that we see <laughs> will not be exactly connected to the rows and what I mean by that is the blue strands duck under the green and go back behind so this what's blue right here the stranding that connects to that row if it helps is down here 
but don't worry too much about this. Like the stranding that goes for this row is down here. So this top one, let's make it purple. Because this top one is what's going to end up back up on the needle, believe it or not. All right, so. And I need to make this a little bit clearer so we can see how we're going to fix this. One of the things that this drawing is helping me point out in a way is you want to climb the ladder, but if you miss any of the rungs of this ladder, like that blue one was kind of hiding behind the loose stitch, if you miss any of the, long, the rungs, you're going to come out with an abnormal number of stitches here and it won't fit exactly the same. So what we want to do to climb this ladder is you want to take your repair hook. Let me do this in black. The repair hook is going to go through the loop And then from front to back, and when I say front to back, I'm always talking about the side that is ours, that we're looking at is the front. The side you can't see on the other side of the fabric is the back. Put the repair through the loop front to back. Grab a strand, the next strand. the next rung on the ladder and pull through. You'll be left with one loop on your repair hook and you do it again. So your repair hook is going to go straight through here. Push through, front to back, through the loop, under the strand to grab it. And guess what? Let's look at the next picture down here. So I'm starting to color code the one down here and I've already picked up my blue strand right here. I'm going to keep color coding all of this. I've picked up the one that's going to match the V's on this side when I'm done with it. So it is the current loop, whereas before I was describing having the current loop be the green one. And if you notice, my repair hook is under, I've done the motions, it's under, take out extraneous lines here would be helpful. It's under the strand that's going to become my orange one. And up here, I've still got my purple. So what I want to point out on this drawing is my repair hook is front to back through this loop, and it has ducked under the next strand, which is the purple, not the, I mean, ugh, I wish I could talk straight, which is the orange. It's only ducked under the orange, not the purple. Only one strand at a time. Try not to skip any strands. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull this orange strand under the blue one and pop back up. And then we'll have a loop that is orange on the strand on the repair hook. And we can get under the purple one and pull that one straight up. This may be one of those things. It's just easier to show you all in person. But again, the idea is that we're going front to back under a loop, grabbing a strand and pulling that one back through. We've got a new loop. We don't need to rearrange anything for stockinette. And we're going to go under the next strand and pull it back up. Let's take a look at this with real yarn. So here are my Knitter's Pride repair hooks. Again, kind of glorified crochet hooks, right? But they have an end that looks kind of like a knitting needle, and I'll show you how I use those in a minute. Now, I've got my super big example here. The three different sizes I mean you can pick one that's more comfortable for what you're working with. I'm going to use the biggest one, even though it's nowhere near as big as my stuff. That's okay. 
So what I tell people to do in my Fix Your Mistakes class, I actually tell them to slide over to somewhere in the middle of their work to replicate this. I'm gonna drop a stitch, let's do this one. Kick off a stitch, and if you watch as I pull this out, I'm pulling them away from myself to unravel it. I'm gonna take it down, I think that's good, right there. So my needles may get clunky here as I keep dropping them and picking them up, but I'm gonna try. I can slide them up a little bit. I'm going to try to ignore them for a while because I want to deal with all of this. So th this is my this is my loop. So it doesn't run away from me. I'm going to take my crochet hook and I'm going to put it in that loop. What I call front to back, but I'm not going all the way under. I'm just catching it like that. Bottom to top might be another good way to, to talk about it. Now, take a look. If I get him out of the way, Look at all these rungs of ladders I need to go up. I have one, two, three, four, five. I don't wanna skip any. I don't wanna go up here and skip this one. So all I'm gonna do, I have a loop on my hook, back on my hook, not in the hook. I'm gonna duck this under the first strand of the ladder. And then some people can catch this in and they can go whoop and catch it and pull it up without using their fingers. I like to use my fingers. I get the strand caught in the hook and I'm going to pull that strand under and through the loop and settle it back. Now if I pull it up and look, look, I made a v-neck and it matches the v-necks around it. That's what we're going for. So I want to find my next rung of my ladder. I could pick it up and hold it really to see, but here's the next one. I'm going to duck my hook under the next rung of my ladder. I'm going to pull that strand through the loop and settle it back. Look, I've picked up two stitches. New loop on my hook. I'm going to keep going. Find the next strand, get it in my hook, pull that strand, that rung of the ladder, through the loop, creates my new loop. Under the next strand, pull that ladder rung through the loop, look at that, put it under the next rung, this is the top one, pull it through the loop, settle it back. Now here's why, why I like that this other end looks like a needle, because if I pull straight up and pivot, this is now my right hand needle and I can slide it straight back onto my left. It helps me put it on so that the right side of this loop is in front. It helps me get it back on. That's why I like one of these, even though it's not just a, a crochet hook, I could use any old crochet hook. The repair needle helps me get it back on the needles with less thinking and hassle. And now take a look. I picked up all those stitches, looks pretty good. Sometimes when you pick up things you fixed, it won't look exactly like what's around it and you just kinda gotta make do. If that really makes you unhappy, see my frogging video about ripping it out and getting it back on the needle. I'm a much bigger fan of dropping things down, fixing stuff, picking it back up, or if it runs away from me, just pick it back up so I can keep going. Thanks for joining me on our adventure of picking up stitches using repair hooks, learning how to do that for stockinette. Remember, it's always easier to fix with the knit side, the V side facing you, so you can pull the stitches towards you. Purl stitches, we didn't talk about this when I was doing it. You'd have to pull it away from you, and that can be really super awkward. So on my next video, I think we'll probably talk about how to fix garter, which is where you have fronts and backs of stitches on both sides. Instead of all the fronts of the knit stitches just on one side where it's easy, we'll go over that. That's a different, a slightly different process, variations on a theme. So bear with me, and we'll do that. But for now, I'm going to do my shameless plug for consider subscribing 
consider ringing that little bell so you get notifications. At least give this a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, see what how many flubs I can catch in the editing process. And the last plug for either Zoom help, I, I'm a, I actually have to run to go meet some people on Zoom right now, which is one of the reasons I'm rushing this just a little bit. Someone just texted me about that, so I gotta go. But hey, if you want to get some Sun Dragon merch, Sun Dragon t-shirt, I'll put in the comment below the description how you can get that. And, and join us. Join us for Zoom nights. Join us for all the fun things we're doing. Contact me for more information about lessons. And may your crafting journey be filled with joy and confidence. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye. Hi, baby. Really? Oh.